Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey here. Well into my trip back to the beach. I am on my way back to Virginia Beach, like I said. I haven't filmed anything because I was doing other shit and then I dropped my transmitter somewhere on the floor and I literally didn't pass a single rest stop. I kept passing signs for the next rest stop, but I never actually got to one. So this is, if we were going from or to my mother-in-law's this is what we consider the halfway point even though it's not really halfway but i'm in waynesboro virginia and i stopped at the starbucks just to pee and grab uh, a nice coffee it's a gorgeous day out it's been very sunny it's very warm out 86 degrees here anyways it was 91 last night when i got to the hotel and incredibly humid so i, I know that they were in for more of that today so far, so good. I mean, it's only 11.39, so I know that uh, I'm not going to be hitting rain until I get closer to Virginia Beach. That being said, my meeting went pretty long this morning. I actually went until almost 10, and when I kind of tried to guesstimate how long it was going to take me to get home yesterday, I went with saying, ah, well, let's just say 10 o'clock. That way, I'll have a buffer, because I didn't think my meeting was actually going to go until 10 o'clock. But it says that I should get home at 2.42, but that's without any other stopping. So this is a stop. I'm gonna have to stop at least one more time to pee. I don't know that I'll need gas and I'll get that when I get into town. So in other words, I always overestimate when I'm gonna get home. So, you know, like it, it says I'm gonna get home at almost three. I tell my wife four-ish. That way, wherever I stop, plus when I get home, I go to the UPS store to pick up packages. I go get gas, blah, 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 blah. All that shit adds time. Plus, I always figure there's just going to be awful tunnel traffic. There's probably going to be awful tunnel traffic because there always is, and it's going to be raining by the time I get there. So now you know my thought process for how I guesstimate what time I'm going to get home. Looking forward to sitting in my office for the next two and a half, or like a day and a half. But that just means that on Friday, I'm not doing jack shit. So I've been watching a lot of different videos than I normally would. I bought all the gear that I want, photo video gear that is. So I haven't really been watching too much of that. I don't need to, to read about any lenses. I don't need to read about any cameras because I already have exactly what I want. I am, however, trying to delve out into other hobbies or maybe not even necessarily other hobbies, but other things that I'd like to know how to do better or at all. For instance, and, and I'm driving in the mountains, so I'm not going to be all crazy about getting all up in the camera and stuff, but one of the bracelets that I've got on here, which is the one that's on the bottom of, the, of my arm screen-wise anyways, is a bracelet that I just made the other day. I made one for myself and I made one for my wife. And it's basically these stainless steel skulls and then these round lava beads. When I first started trying to put it together, I realized I bought the wrong size stretchy cord because it was so big that it wouldn't fit through the hole in the lava beads and I bought it because I wanted it to be strong so I got the thickest one that I could find and it turns out that really wasn't the way to go so I started watching jewelry making videos especially on bead jewelry like that and the first video I came across taught me more than I have ever, ever known about that including the proper tools to make it so that it is easier to make and it's also way the hell stronger than anything I could have come up with. So I went to Michael's and I got some stuff again after watching the video and I also ordered stuff from Amazon some of which will be there by the time I go pick it up today and I made these bracelets as a first attempt I think I did pretty good there's a little bit of, of, of a gap where you can see in between everything because I didn't make it tight enough but it's good enough for government work as i'm fond of saying and i like it and i don't feel like it's going to bust apart it's very strong instead of having just one single loop of the stretchy cord it's got two i've also knotted the ever loving shit out of it and super glued the knots the bottom line is is that i'm learning about this bead jewelry so now instead of going out and buying bead jewelry I can make my own confidently, or I can repair something that I've had that's broken that I need to fix, which is another thing I need to do. And I'm pretty stoked about that. And it was very minor as far as the outlay for 
parts and tools. The only thing I needed to do was to buy these, these like fucking four inch needles that the eyelet is the entire needle. But oh my God, so effective. Now I just need to go out and source good beads. A lot of times when you buy stuff like this, like the, the silver stuff, I mean, it's first of all, it's not sterling silver and it doesn't need to be for me because I like stainless steel as well. But sometimes it's not even stainless steel. It's shit metal that's been spray painted with silver paint. And in a week and a half, it'll be completely wearing and look like crap. So I don't like to buy cheap stuff like that. The lava beads, I think I'll do good with that. I'm, I'm enjoying the whole jewelry thing. At one point, I, you know, I used to be in the jewelry world in another lifetime, and that really got me into like bracelets and, and rings. And obviously, I mean, look at me, I've got two on this wrist and three on this one, and I've got you know, three rings on each hand, and I've got enough rings that I could put rings on every finger and every toe. So I love the jewelry stuff like that and it's pretty cool. It's just something to help me occupy myself and to do something else creative because I've got to have an outlet, man. And that leads me to the next thing that I started doing. Now, I have always carried some form of a pad, a notepad, a notebook, a, a big pad, and I tried to go digital and I got a bunch of apps that are basically, you know, like note style apps, and I found that I didn't use them. I still just prefer to have a physical notepad with a pen that I can scroll notes into, whether they be messed up monkey thoughts or a to-do list or a shopping list or just information in general. I just enjoy doing that. Now, I can go through all the Rubbermaid storage things that I have in the garage and the magical drawers and cabinets and various bookshelves and shit everywhere in almost every room in my house. And you will find a pad, probably a well-used pad. There's two right now in this little cubby here in my Forerunner, plus there's some in the center console. Plus, I've got two in my little man purse. The bottom line is, is that I love pads, notepads. And I don't want to say journals because I don't journal, but I guess I do journal without realizing that I journal. I got a lot of like messed up sayings in, in these notepads. I got stupid pictures, shit like that. So I guess I've been a journaler without realizing that I've been a journaler. All right, so the most recent one that I bought, and I got a bunch of these smaller ones that are fountain pen friendly because I have a number of fountain pens and they all suck. Well, I ended up going to buy my wife one for her birthday and bought myself one. And I went to this place that I think it's called like the pen experience. It, the whole place is just nothing but pens and pads and everything associated with it. And the woman was very patient listening to me rant about how I have all these freaking pens, fountain pens especially, that are very frustrating because they're garbage. And I said, I've got everything from like, I don't even know where the hell I got this one. I think it might've come free with something that I bought to expensive carbon fiber rose gold fountain pens that are just absolute garbage. I'll spend 20 minutes with hot water and Q-tips and you name it, cleaning out the nib and, and the whole ink system and just trying to get it cleaned out with scalding hot water and paper towels, you name it. And then putting in what I thought was good ink, I'd be able to write with it and I'd set it down. And a couple of them, and I shit you not, I set them down, two minutes later, they already don't write. Like they're already clogging. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. And those are the most expensive ones that were the shittiest ones. So I got pretty frustrated and I'm like, look, I'm not just gonna start going on Amazon or online and Google and looking for a fountain pen and reading through 4,000 feedbacks and having people say, this is the greatest pen ever to having other people say, this thing's a piece of shit and it clogged after a day. I don't wanna do that anymore. So that's why I went to this store to specifically look for a particular type of pen and ink. I told the woman like, all right, here's the deal. I explained the whole history of my shitty pens and the fact that I want something that I don't have to basically recondition every time I wanna friggin' write something. She ended up suggesting this particular line of pen. And they had plastic ones, but they also had aluminum ones. So of course the monkey's gonna spend more money so I got her an aluminum one and and I got her a little like little notebook and I you know I specifically asked about that too because I also read that all paper is not created equal 
and like moleskin, moleskin, whatever. Those are really popular notepads, notebooks, whatever, journals, and they're absolute shit for using with fountain pens. So she suggested another type that was there. So I got her one, I got me one, I got myself a pen, I got her a pen. Holy shit, these things are amazing. Like the one that I have in my, my man purse, it had been in there. I don't think I had written with it for like two months. It was like I just put the ink in. And I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Because I know that really expensive rose gold carbon fiber one, if I set it down, again, I'm not shitting you, two minutes later, it wouldn't write. Now I finally found a fountain pen that works really well. We went back there not a couple of weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, and we bought more like another fountain pen each for us. I might go get another one too here this weekend because I love them that much. And that way I've got one, like the, the second one that I just bought the last time sits at home on my desk and I use that now every day, constantly writing down all my shit for work and personal stuff and all that stuff. I've got this one in my bag and I want another one for what I'm starting to do now, which I guess is journaling. I always have thoughts, ideas, shit just streaming through the monkey melon. But as far as like the journaling and the notepads and, and you know the pens and all that kind of stuff, I've always liked to get nice pens. And now that I've found fountain pens that work well, you know, I can see getting one more. So I have three, she's got three, and then I'll be investing in, in more of the notebooks and all that kind of stuff and the journal pads and whatever. I did buy a portable, like I guess, I guess it's Bluetooth, a portable Bluetooth printer. It uses the thermal technology. So basically what it does is it uses heat and all that shit to basically print onto special paper that's, that's made for it. Naturally, the monkey ordered a shitload of 20 year paper because I don't want my shit fading after two years. And I did find that out because I have a Dymo label printer that I used for work. I put it on all of my folders and I found that after a period of time, it was all wearing off. And I'm like, oh, well that sucks because I didn't understand the whole concept of the thermal printing and that not all papers are created equal. So learn something new. So I got this little printer that I can carry around with me and I can basically take pictures, you know, with my cell phone or use pictures on my cell phone, go through their app, resize stuff, church it up and all that shit, but it is a monochrome printer. Now, am I gonna be going full all like Barbie artsy shit where I have a second channel that's all for Bujo, which is bullet journaling? No, but you know, I'm just gonna have a place where I can just let the ideas flow out of my head. A lot of that is going to be filming ideas. So all this is leading me to the fact that I have just this constant stream of thoughts and ideas just whipping around in the old monkey melon. I used to get it out just through photography because I, when I did this, you know, way back in Chicago, especially when I first started, all the ideas poured out into specific photo shoots. Now back then, my wife was more receptive to being the model for, for my ideas. And, and then she got into it and she had ideas and we both used each other to shoot with, not so much anymore. So I'm still out there looking for other humans to work with that aren't flakes. Eh. Well, you know how that all worked out, which is why I turned to birding and, and wildlife. But I figure that I need to find other outlets because sometimes I just can't grab my cameras and go out into the woods or go out into town or go anywhere. The weather's shit. Uh, I'm in a location where I just can't do that or I don't feel safe, but I can sit inside of a hotel room and I can write out a bunch of ideas or I can print out a bunch of pictures and, and almost storyboard things that I want to do or just for fun, just doodle and put weird shit in there. And then someday when somebody finds them all, they're going to think, holy crap, what a freak. <laughs> well, like you don't already think that. So all this is geared towards getting an outlet for just what's going through my melon. And a lot of this will go towards getting the ideas out of my head and putting it down on paper, which in the past has helped me develop more filming ideas or photo shoot ideas. And I'm kind of looking forward to that. Just a, a, another avenue of creativity for me that hopefully will occupy my time and keep the monkey calm and keep me active and keep me creating because I love to do shit like that. That's kind of where I'm going. So that's it. That's all you get for today. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, be sure to leave them down below. As always, thanks for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember, kids, forward and up.